Welcome to another podcast from School of Surgery. Today we're going to discuss how best to talk about a stoma. So by the end of today's podcast, hopefully, we should be able to define a stoma. We'll briefly talk through some common examples. We'll mention the differences between an ileostomy and a colostomy, as they do come up fairly frequently in clinical practice. We'll mention some common complications of a stoma, and then briefly discuss the principles of an examination of a stoma. So first of all, what is a stoma? Well, it actually derives from the Greek word for mouth, which is the best way of thinking of it. It's simply an opening between the body cavity, or a body cavity, and the outside environment. A natural stoma, therefore, is actually your mouth. However, we'll be talking about stoma in the context of an artificial or surgical stoma, which a prefix would be the anatomical location, followed by ostomy. In surgery, this is usually between a hollow organ or hollow viscous and the outside environment. An example would be a colostomy, where the ostomy refers to mouth and the colo refers to the colon. So some common examples. In terms of the GI tract, working from top to bottom, a common one would be a gastrostomy, communication between the stomach and the outside environment. Jejunostomy, here referring to the jejunum. Ileostomy, referring to the ileum. Colostomy, referring to the colon. Next one is a urostomy, where we have diversion of the urinary tract. A tracheostomy, referring to the trachea. Finally, a cholecystostomy, referring to the gallbladder. This list isn't exhaustive, but it just gives you an idea of the range of stomas which you may encounter in clinical practice. So now we'll talk about the basic principle of how to form a stoma. And in this example, we'll be using the bowel as it's a commonly seen stoma in clinical practice. So here we have a very, very basic diagram of the abdominal wall underneath which lies a segment of bowel. And the principle we're trying to get across is that we need to form a communication between the bowel and the outside world. Now, the way in which we do this is obviously surgically fashioning it but ultimately, we want the outcome to be a communication between the bowel and the outside world. Now, this can be for various reasons which we won't go into, but as you can see here, the bowel is now diverted to the abdominal wall, and the contents proximal to this will now end up in the outside environment, into a stoma bag. Next, we'll talk a little bit about the difference between an end and a loop. Now, in this case, this is an end ostomy. It may be an ileostomy or a colostomy, but ultimately the piece of bowel ends at the abdominal wall and is a single lumen. The alternative is called a loop. In this case, it could be a loop ileostomy or colostomy, but essentially you're bringing up a segment of bowel to the abdominal wall and creating an incision into the bowel, which results in the opening of the proximal segment here, which allows anything coming out of that segment to go into the outside environment. However, a communication remains with the distal segment. The bowel contents don't actually go back into that segment. However, the principle of this stoma is that it can be easily reversed by sewing back up that segment of bowel and dropping it back into the cavity, allowing for a quick and effective reversal. Now, as I mentioned, we'll talk briefly about the differences between an ileostomy and a colostomy, as these do often come up in clinical practice. Now, there's three ways in which you can tell the difference between each of these, and there are opposites to make it easier for us. So an ileostomy is frequently seen in the right iliac fossa. It's often spouted, and the stoma bag will have liquid contents. On the other hand, a colostomy is frequently found in the left iliac fossa. The stoma is flush with the surrounding skin, and the bag will have formed stool. Just to mention the difference between spouted and flush, and why that is, here we have a diagrammatic representation of a spouted stoma, and what you see, the bowel walls have been everted on themselves, the bowel walls are therefore raised up off the abdominal wall, giving you the opportunity to seal effectively a stoma bag around this, which means whatever's coming out of that stoma, the contents, won't have access or direct contact with the surrounding skin. 
This is useful in an ileostomy where the contents can be particularly erosive or irritating and you need to keep them off the surrounding skin. This is in contrast to the stoma which is flush where the edges of the lumen are in direct contact with the skin and as you can see the surface is flush along with the skin. Now in terms of stoma complications we'll briefly outline some of the common complications and they're things to look out for when examining or inspecting a stoma. The first one is ischemia so just like any surgical manipulation of anything you can for various reasons disrupt the blood supply and therefore when, an examin when examining the stoma you might notice that it looks necrotic or gangrenous and that's due to the ischemia. You might have retraction so if the fashioning in the stoma is inadequate it might be pulling, pulling itself back into the abdominal cavity in which case it'll look very tight on its axis almost retracting back into the abdominal cavity. Next is a prolapse essentially the opposite of retraction whereby the stoma is protruding out of its orifice. Next is high output. Now this actually refers to a stoma whereby the output is higher than or above average. This particularly refers to post-operative ile or colostomies whereby the output far exceeds the normal output and this can lead to derangements in the volemic status of the per person and also the electrolytes. Next is dermatitis. Now this is in specific relation to an ileostomy where the contents are irritative and can irritate the surrounding skin. Next is psychological. This is frequently forgotten to be mentioned as a complication and what it refers to is the fact that having a stoma formed for whatever reason has a significant psychological impact on the well-being of the patient and it should never be underestimated the effect it can have on patients. Next is a stenosis. Now this is where the lumen of the stoma is stenosed for various reasons. And finally a hernia. As you can imagine, if you have a stoma in the abdominal wall where the cavity is under high pressure, you've created a defect in the wall which allows the opportunity for contents to protrude out around that defect resulting in a parastomal hernia. Now we'll briefly mention examination. Now obviously there's no replacement for examining a patient examining stomas but we'll just quickly run over a simple approach. So here is our patient as an example, and the first thing we're going to do is inspect. The stoma lies in the right iliac fossa. We can also observe a midline laparotomy scar, and at this stage we should be looking for those complications. Can we see any dermatitis? Is there any evidence of any lumps around the stoma, suggesting a hernia? Next we move on to palpation. So this is the opportunity to feel the contents of the bag, are they formed? Are they liquid? And also we can palpate around the stoma site to find out if there are any hernia present. We should also offer to perform digital examination. Here we can find out if the stoma has a stenosis. Also the contents. Remember, if the patient no longer has a communication with their rectum, then this is your opportunity to find out the colour and form of the stool. Finally, this often allows you to find out whether the stoma is single lumen or double lumen, helping you differentiate between an end and a loop. In this case, we have an ileostomy. We know this because it's in the right iliac fossa, it's spouted, which we discovered on examination, and the bag has liquid contents. This is in contrast to a colostomy. Here, as you'll remember, it's in the left iliac fossa, it's flush with the surrounding skin and the contents of the bag are formed stool. Now, just to go over what we've covered today. We've defined a stoma. We've talked about some common examples of stoma. We've briefly mentioned the, the difference between an ileostomy and a colostomy. We've mentioned stoma complications. And very briefly mentioned what we could be looking out for on examination. Remember, you can follow us by searching School of Surgery on Facebook. You can subscribe to School of Surgery podcasts on iTunes. And finally, you can visit the website schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com. Thank you very much.